This kids, let us get up to 500 meters of PUE with only two extenders. Hi yep. tech enthusiasts, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Imagine this, your warehouse just got a new extension built way out back. The perfect place to mount a wireless access point, but it's 350 meters away from the main network. And that's exactly the situation our client was in. They needed a Wi-Fi access point on a warehouse extension and they wanted full gigabit speed. But there's no extra power outlets along the way, so we're going to solve it with power over Ethernet. Just one clean, long run, stable power and fast Wi-Fi access point at the end. But our problem is, standard PoE is really only designed for about 100 meters per run. After that, you start losing both signal quality and voltage. So if you try to go 350 meters straight from the network, the last 250 meters are basically a dead zone. No power, no data, no Wi-Fi. On top of that, this access point is designed for gigabit, so we cannot make it kind of work at 10 or 100 megabits. We need a full gigabit PoE link. Now the common way to solve this is daisy chain a bunch of PoE extenders. 100 meters extenders, another 100 meters extenders, and so on. But that comes with its own issues. More devices means more point of failure. And sometimes we we'll put small switches halfway down a fence line or out on a pole, which is a maintenance headache. And instead, here's the solution we're using today. Our 300 meters PoE gigabit link extension kits. So these kits let us get up to 500 meters of PoE with only two extenders. Here's how the distance break down. We can do up to 100 meters from the main network to extender one. Then up to 300 meters cable between extender one and extender two. And then another 100 meters from the extender two to the access point. So that's 500 meters total with only two extenders in the whole chain. No midpoint active switch mounted on a pole, no daisy chain of four or five little boxes. And fewer devices means fewer things to break. And by eliminating that midpoint active device, you improve reliability and make maintenance much easier. If something goes wrong, you really only have two extenders and a long cable run to check. Now let's walk through the installation because there are a couple of details you do not want to get wrong. First, pay attention to the orientation. Each extender has an input and output port. And for this long 300 meter span between them, we're going to flip the first extender so that its input is facing toward the second extender's input. What does it mean? Normally, you connect the router to the input port, right? But today, we are connecting to our extender's output port. And then, we connect the 300 meters Ethernet cable to the input port. Here we go. And coming over here to our second extender, we are connecting the 300 meters cable to the input port as well. Now this extender are IP67 rated, which is great for outdoor use, but only if you actually seal them correctly. And for water ingress protection, we have to use the wrench to firmly fasten the neck and the gland on each side. Hand tight isn't enough here. But for fast installation, I'm taking everything out. Now we connect the 300 meters Ethernet cable to the input port of our extender. Then use another Ethernet cable to connect to the output port. Directly here to our Wi-Fi access point. All right. Let's check it out. So we ran a cable from the router to the access point. At first glance, everything seems fine, but 
no lights on, nothing passed through. This is what you'll see if you forget about PoE on the front end. The problem is, there's no PoE feed. Our extenders are PoE powered devices, so they need to receive power over Ethernet in order to boost power and data down the line. In order to fix this, we are going to add a PoE switch here with the router. Alright, let me unplug the cable and place our PoE switch here. We're going to power it up. I'm going to plug in our AC cable. All right, it is powered up. I'm going to use a short patch cord so we can connect the router to our switch for data and then connect our short patch cord from our PoE switch. So we can inject both power and data to our first extender. And that powers both extenders down the chain. And with that sorted, let's look at the performance. Now we are seeing indicated lights are getting on. Important note, these extenders are designed for gigabit only environments. They're not compatible with 10 or 100 megabit devices like a lot of older IP cameras. So if you plug in 10 or 100 device, the link simply won't work. So use them where you have a gigabit switch and gigabit devices. Now, because part of our link is outdoor, so we also need to think about surge protection. Long cable runs can act like antennas for lightning in those searches, even if they never take a direct strike. So we are adding a surge protector on both ends. Now coming here at our control room, since this is indoor, so we are able to use our indoor PoE surge protector. One thing is, we have to face the input port toward our long cable. So we need to connect it to our extender run right before it. So I'm going to unplug our 300 meters Ethernet cable and connect to the input port of our indoor surge protector. Then use another short patch cord to connect the output port so we can have clean power directly back to the input port of our first extender right before the extender and make sure you ground our surge protector and another surge protector is next to our second extender now this is our outdoor PoE search protector. It's also IP67 rated, but I'm taking this out for faster installation. And that way, search energy is clamped before it can reach our extenders. Again, use the 300 meters Ethernet cable, connect to the input port of our outdoor search protector. Then use another Ethernet cable connect the output port to the input port of our extender. It's a small investment compared to replacing gears or dealing with downtime after a storm. Make sure you ground it as well. And this outdoor source protector has a special DIN rail mount. So now we're done. Now before we wrap up, let me spend a minute on a couple of pro tips that really matter when you're pushing PoE to this kind of distance. First, cable choice. Use solid copper like FIV or CAT6, not CCA, copper, clay, aluminum. CCA might be cheaper, but it has significantly higher resistance. And that difference is crucial for stable power when you're hundreds of meters away from the switch. Second, PoE power budget. 
If your switch doesn't provide enough PoE power for this long run plus the Wi-Fi access points demand, you have an option. Instead of relying solely on the switch, you can power it with PoE++ injector. PoE++ uses all four twisted pairs of wires for power not just two, and that means the current is spread over more conductors, which reduces power loss over distance and let you deliver more wattage safely. So here we have a clean, reliable gigabit PoE link all the way out to our remote Wi-Fi access point with no extra electrical wiring in between. Now, if you found this helpful and you're planning a long distance PoE project, let me know your scenario in the comment section below. And if you want more deep dive but easy to follow networking builds like this one, you can hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in our next video.